Everybody knows Howard University. It's located in New Jersey, USA, and we have with us three presenters who can, will be presenting Howard University to us. Uh, Miss Olga Yudkin. Olga, you there? Yes. Hello. Can you can you hear me? I can hear you, Olga, very well. Thank you very much. Can Olga you see me? Can you see me as well? I think. Yeah, I can see you. So Olga okay, is international yeah. recruitment coordinator. We have uh, Ms. Lauren Polara. Lauren, you there? Hello. Hi, Lauren, you there? Yes, I am here. Wow. So Lauren is assistant director, international admissions, and we have Ms. Kissini String. Kissini, you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello, everyone. Hi, Richard. Great to see you again. Same here. And Kissini is Senior Assistant Director, International Admissions, and they are going to present Rowan University to us. Uh, you know, the stage is all set for you guys to present, and we have all our years for you. Thank you very much for being present on the Student University Webinar for. Thank you, Richard. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Yes, great. Okay, so welcome everyone. This is Rowan University International Center. My name is Olga Yutkin. I'm International Recruitment Coordinator. And today we're going to talk about Rowan University and everything about it that you need to know about it if you want to study here. So please, if you're joining us, uh, let's look at, uh, at what's on the agenda for today. I'm going to uh, introduce our team and today's speakers. And then we're going to speak a little bit about Rowan, where we are located, who we are. Um, then we will touch on international admissions for undergraduate and graduate students and some admission requirements. Uh, we will speak about student and campus life. And at the end, we'll be able to answer your questions. So please, you can leave your questions in the chat box so that we can address them at the end of the presentation. So here we are, your today's speakers. My, myself, Olga Yutkin, I'm International Recruitment Coordinator. Uh, Ms. Gessiani Strings, she's Senior Assistant Director of International Admissions. And Ms. Lauren Polara, she's Assistant Director of International Admissions here at Rowan University. Uh, the three of us all together, we work with international students. Uh, so if you have any questions at all, you can email us, you can get in touch with us. We are always there for you. So Rowan University was founded in 1923. So we are almost 100 years old. Uh, today, we are one of the fastest growing public research uh, uh, higher education institutions in the United States. At Rowan University, our momentum is unstoppable. Pushing forward, pushing boundaries, and blazing our own path. We don't wait for the future, we make it. Building a nationally ranked engineering program, earning recognition as a top 100 public research university, training tomorrow's doctors at our two leading medical schools, and creating innovative pathways to earn a degree on your terms. We don't hesitate. We seize the moment. We are adding new academic programs to prepare tomorrow's leaders to face the challenges that come with it. Expanding an already vibrant campus with new learning spaces that inspire and attracting a constantly growing community of unique students who are ready to make their mark on the world. So make your mark and be unstoppable at Rowan University. All right, so let's move on to the next slide. Uh, this is where we are located. Our main campus is located in the town of Glassboro, which is in Southern New Jersey. You can see it on the map here where the yellow star is. This is where Glassboro is. It's a small student town and most of it is occupied by the campus. It's uh, 800 acres of park-like territory. Everything is within walking distance here for students. And not only are there study and residence hall for students, but there are also plenty of other uh, facilities 
like cafes, restaurants, gyms, uh, shops, and everything that students who live and study here, everything that they need to live, uh, lead a comfortable life while they're studying at Rowan. Uh, as you can see, uh, Glassboro is very conveniently located close to major East Coast cities. So we are only two hours away from New York City, three hours to Washington DC, and we are only 25 minutes to Philadelphia with its international airport. This is uh, uh, super convenient. We are also lucky to uh, be just one hour away from the beach. As you know, New Jersey is located on the shore of the Atlantic Ocean. So we have miles of beautiful white sandy beaches that are uh, accessible for everyone. So being just one hour away from the beach is very, it's very nice for students. Uh, so very nice way to distress, to get your feet wet in the water. So we are very, very lucky to have it. Uh, so if anyone coming to New Jersey, they, uh, they must be prepared for all sorts of weather. We have four distinct seasons here. Uh, well, winters tend to uh, be quite mild. It doesn't often snow. Uh, sometimes it does snow, however, so you must be ready for that. Uh, most of the times it's uh, mild and warm. Summers tend to get quite hot. And two most beautiful seasons are spring and fall. This is when everything turns really colorful, really beautiful. And that's the best time to visit hundreds of New Jersey's state parks, to go hiking, uh, just to go for a walk out outdoors. Uh, New Jersey is a very historical state. As you know, it's one of the original 13 colonies. So there are plenty of historical sites, historical buildings preserved from back, uh, back from those days that are open for, uh, for visiting. So if anyone's coming to the United States to study and they want to uh, explore this country, they want to learn more about the history of this country, New Jersey is a great place to start. New Jersey is also a very multicultural and multi-ethnical uh, state. There are, uh, there are people from all over the world living here. So if our international students ever get homesick, if they want to uh, say, try their, uh, to have their national cuisine, I can assure you they can easily find it here because it's so diverse. New Jersey is also a great state for those students who wish to uh, find, a, to, to start a career here and maybe land a, a well-paying jobs. It is uh, home to some major companies and uh, so particularly, Fortune 500, com 500 companies, among them uh, such famous ones as Johnson & Johnson, Prudential Financial, Merck, and Honeywell. Okay, Casey, would you like to continue? Sure, thank you, Olga. And again, thank you so much for joining us today, um, taking a little bit of your time to learn more about Rowan. Uh, we're really thankful to, you know, you're sparing a little bit of time uh, to learn, you know, what are the unique things about Rowan? So um, one first thing is that um, for those interested in medical school, Rowan is one uh, in three institutions in the U.S. that have two medical schools. Uh, we offer the MD program and the DO program. Um, beyond that, what are unique things that really puts us, um, you know, in a map and kind of like it's unique really to Rowan is that we have a fossil park um, right on our campus. Um, they are planning to build a museum as well. So for those that are interested in um, fossils and digging and you know environmental science and things like that, that's a great opportunity for, um, for those students. Um, beyond that, we do have a planetarium on campus as well. Uh, if you'd like to you know, see the skylight um, and so on. They also have different shows uh, throughout the, um, the year. Next slide, please. All right, so Rowan is a comprehensive institution. Uh, we have over 100 plus um, programs from the um, bachelor's certificates, masters, all the way to the doctoral and professional um, you know, programs as well. Um, we have here all of our colleges, um, and um, some of the famous ones that uh, it's really, you know, particular for international students, I would say their College of Science and Mathematics is really, really popular. Uh, also our College of Engineering as well, seem like our international students are really Focus on um, STEM, um, you know, majors, but also our business school is very popular too. We are AACSB accredited. 
only 5% of the schools in the world have that type of accreditation. Uh, we also a better accredited for College of Engineering. Um, and also we have, you know, um, schools for students that are looking for pre-med. We have that option as well in our professional schools um, too. So like I said, top programs, here's our you know, uh, popular list among our international students. I would say computer science is our top, top program. Cybersecurity data science is really popular. Uh, many of our engineering programs is also uh, pretty popular as well. Um, business, so as you see, we have pretty much you know, uh, many different um, options for our international students. Um, we also have arts, um, psychology, and um, you know, computer science, like I said, biological science, if you're interested in pre-med and so on. So if, um, like I said, we do have many options uh, and I would um, encourage you to explore our website. And in our website, you can actually compare these different majors as well and see which one is the best fit for you. All right, so a little bit about our enrollment profile. Um, so Rowan, we're currently um, close to 20,000 um, students, um, total population. Among them, a majority are undergrad students, uh, over 16,000. And then we have our graduate students, which are international students, really um, you know, make a big, big bulk of our graduate students and also our professional students there as well. Um, right now, we're about 2% international, uh, which is pretty cool to see you know, our international population grow growing and thriving year after year. Um, majority of our students are coming from India, where you guys uh, are. So we have a big uh, Indian population here. We like to call, you know, the city of New Jersey kind of like a mini India. So you're not going to feel homesick. We have, you know, you're going to have plenty of friends here. Your, your food is all good mentioned as well and so on. But we have international students from all over the world, uh, particularly from Asia um, and also from Europe as well, South America and so on. Um, I think the most important thing in this slide is it talks a little bit about our international student retention rate, uh, which is about 86%. Uh, and that you know tends to increase year after year. Uh, and the reason is uh, our students are really happy here. They're enjoying their academic experience. They're enjoying, enjoying their lifestyle here at Rowan, what Rowan has to offer. Uh, like all this said, it's a mini college town. So pretty much everything you need is in close access. And you know with all of these different opportunities as well that these students are gathering, and job opportunities and so on, they're really in, enjoying, they're not moving to another institution. Um, in the US, as you're aware, it's very easy to transfer to another institution if you're not enjoying your experience, which is different from many other countries. And sometimes you can really transfer many of those credits as well with you. So what I mean by the 86 um, um, retention rate is that our students are deciding to stay with us and not moving somewhere else. And I think a big reason for that as well is an institution of our size, it's very unique and there are not many of them um, out there that um, have a small classroom size. As you see, our average class size is about 20 students per class. Um, our closest um, competitor, they do have, you know, a bunch of lecture halls, they have teaching assistants, so it's not, you know, it's a, someone of a master's typically, you know, um, teaching these students and so on. For us, many of our professors have a terminal degree and expertise in the field, um, and that provides our students so many opportunities for jobs, internships, um, research, and so on. Um, so I think that is really what sets us apart uh, as a public research institution is, you know, the small classroom field, the students can really get connected to the faculty and that can lead to different opportunities and also to the international center and many different offices on campus as well. Next slide, please. All right, so we like to say that we are on the rise, and uh, it's just great to see. I've been here at Rowan for a total of like close to eight years, but in this position about um, six years, um, and it's great to see how Rowan's been growing year after year. I've seen in our international team as well, uh, in the institution and the different things that they're investing and so on, and also you can see in our rankings. I know international students, they're really focused on rankings, so here are some of our rankings. Um, 
we are just recognized um, among the 88 top public universities in the US. That's according to US News and World Report. Um, among all of the institutions in the US, which there are many, there are over, I believe, 4,300 at this point, we are among, uh, we are um, ranked 179, which really makes us to the top of the list. Um, so beyond that, like I said, many of our um, you know, programs are well recognized. So for example, engineering, uh, we're currently ranked 19 in the nation for our undergrad engineering programs for business, we're 244. Uh, we recently got ranked fifth among the best growing public research institutions. This is a mouthful. However, it, it speaks a lot um, being, you know, among 4,300 institutions, which many institutions are having a hard time right now in the US, we are the fifth fastest growing. Guys, so that's that means that we're doing something right, you know, when we're leading um, as well and providing, you know, many different examples for other institutions um, to, um, to go in that direction. Last but not least, uh, I'm a business person, so that's my major, and money speaks loud to me. So 128, uh, that's a great uh, number, which pretty much means that, you know, uh, it's still pretty affordable um, to get this education here in the state of New Jersey uh, that Olga really highlights some great points about, you know, New Jersey along, which uh, is one of the states in the U.S. that pays the highest. So that's a little tip for you guys. Um, so uh, it, we offer great education for an affordable price. So that's a, a great point as well. All right, so I hope with all of the introduction, uh, you guys are ready to apply. So uh, we're gonna move in into the um, admissions uh, processes and um, what you need to do. So in terms of um, the English language proficiency, this is the same across the board. We accept all of the popular English language requirement tests um, in the market. So TOEFL, YELTS, PTE, Duolingo, we, yes, we do accept Duolingo as well. I get plenty of questions uh, if we accept Duolingo for our master's and PhD program. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, so for Duolingo, it seems like it's the most popular one right now. Uh, the minimum requirement is 95. Uh, for your um, scores. For TOEFL is minimum 70, IELTS 6.0, PTE 50. Uh, and we also provide different waivers as well in the full list. You can check in the link on the right um, hand, right corner of our mirror slide. And this is uh, the same across the board, undergrad uh, and graduate students, for graduate students as well. So a little bit about um, freshman application. Um, one important thing to point out is that our application is free uh, for all levels, for undergrad students and for graduate students. Um, so there's no need to ask for a fee waiver. It's already given to you. Uh, so go ahead and try it out. It's a very um, simple application. You would be you know, uh, surprised of how quickly you can go through our application. Um, and for our undergrad students, it's one application. We make it easy for you guys. So if you're a freshman student, you can select freshman. If you're a transfer student, if you select transfer. And if you don't know if you're a freshman or transfer, guess what? We can help you out. Um, so once you submit that application, uh, you have access to an application portal where you can upload all of your um, supporting materials. So for a freshman student, all we're looking for is your application, first of all. Everything starts with the application. Uh, and then after that, you will need to upload your language proficiency test and your high school transcripts. Uh, for many of our programs, the minimum required is a 2.0 out of four. That does not include our engineering programs. As I mentioned to you guys, it's very highly ranked. So that starts at a 3.2 GPA out of four. Um, also, uh, good news, we are a test optional institution, which means that we're no longer uh, require the SAT or ACT um, test scores, which saves you money, right? Because those tests are expensive. Um, and the biggest news as well is that we uh, do the foreign credential evaluation in-house for you. So, however, if you already have that done, uh, please make sure you upload to our um, application portal because it will just speed up the process instead of us doing it for you. Um, and uh, it will just you know, be quicker for you to receive that um, 
decision. Uh, as you see there, we do not require letters of recommendation. Guess what? I've been doing this for six years. I haven't received one bad letter of recommendation. So we just, myself and Lauren, eliminated that step for you guys um, for our freshmen and transfer students. Performing in creative arts, uh, there's just an additional little step. It could be an audition or a portfolio review. And that's it, guys, for a freshman application. Uh, and you can move to the next slide, Olga. For our transfer students, if you have a minimum of 12 college credits, we consider you a transfer student. And then we have to select in your application um, transfer. Um, and like I said, if you don't know, you can just go through the questions and uh, the, the system will, you know, um, provide you that information. It's the same application. It's called the International Undergraduate Freshman and Transfer Application. Uh, the difference here for transfer students that you need, instead of sending your high school transcripts, you need to submit your college transcripts from every single institution attended. Um, you also need to provide your language proficiency test. Uh, and uh, beyond that, we'll do the foreign credential evaluation for you in-house. Um, one important thing to know is that for language proficiency, um, once you upload that document, please um, you know, uh, collaborate with us. It takes us a couple of days for our processing team to verify that score. So just because it means that you upload it, it doesn't mean that it was processed. You'll be able to see when once it's processed, once you see a green check mark, um, then that means that it is processed. Uh, next slide, please. I'm trying to move three through this undergrad really quickly because I know we're, you know, uh, India is particularly more graduate students. Uh, so here's our cost, as I mentioned to you guys, uh, our tuition fees, uh, it's pretty affordable, uh, 23,400 uh, for uh, an undergrad student. This is out of state cost. Um, and the good news here is that you can literally uh, take up to 17 college credits, academic college credits, and not pay additional fees, which many institutions after that 12 you know, college credits, you pay additional fees. Room and board, this is average. We have many different options, which Lauren will touch on. Uh, and they all vary in price. We have you know, the traditional dorm, but we also have luxury dorm and they have different price, right? Luxury means more expensive. You know, the other ones is a little bit more um, you know, cheaper. Insurance and expenses, that just means your health insurance and other different out-of-pocket um, expenses that varies by each student. As you see the total cost there, this is the cost that is showed on the I-20. Uh, it's about um, 44500 but I can assure you that our students will not pay that because we do have a great scholarship package. Um, for our undergrad students, we offer a auto, auto scholarship for our freshman students and for our transfer students. And there is not a step or application. Once you apply and you submit those couple of um, supporting documents, you're done. And there is not a separate application for scholarship. We start giving scholarship um, starting at a 2.6 GPA. This is unheard, guys. Typically, is a 3.0. Uh, so you know uh, that gives you know students with a little bit of a lower you know GPA. You can still get something. Uh, and we also have different additional scholarships. So, for example, for IB diploma students, they get uh, a different scholarship, uh, particular for IB. Uh, our range for scholarship is from 1,000 to 19,000, 19,000 being the highest you can get. And that is stackable, meaning that you can get um, our auto scholarship that also includes some um, brown and gold scholarship as well. Um, so just to give an idea for a freshman, auto scholarship is up to 11,000 for the year that renews year after year for four years with a minimum of a 2.5 GPA for transfer students up to um, 7,000 for the year and so on. You can always um, talk to your counselor regarding uh, additional scholarships and see if you can qualify uh, for that. But um, my last point is 19,000 out of our tuition, it's just 4,400 that you need to cover. So that is really, really affordable. So uh, next slide, uh, Lauren will discuss a little bit more about graduate admissions. Awesome, thank you. So uh, the first step obviously is to submit our online free application. Um, and then you would go to the portal and start uploading your documents. And so for those requirements, it's obviously that proof of language proficiency, unless you're from a country 
um, where you've received a degree and you are exempt. Um, and that full list of exemptions is on our website. Then for most of our programs, we look for a minimum GPA of 3.0 overall um, for most of the programs. So some programs are a little bit higher, some are a little bit lower. For example, when I talk about the MBA program, that one has a little bit of a higher GPA. That's only if you wanna be considered without the GMAT or GRE. Um, but for a program like criminal justice, they, uh, they only ask for a 2.5. So this um, will be communicated to you when you're submitting your application. When you select the program, it will show you what the minimum required GPA is. Additionally, we ask for college transcripts um, and for your degrees that you have been awarded, those original degrees, or the provisional certificate if you have not yet received the original degree. Students can apply while they're in progress of finishing their bachelor's degree. So if you haven't completed all of your semesters, you can still apply. You would just submit your mark sheets up until the time of your application. So your most recent mark sheet. So that might be semester six, it might be semester seven. Um, if you are uploading incomplete transcripts and or a provisional certificate, we still will ask for your complete transcripts official complete transcripts and a copy of your degree certificate once you arrive, if you're admitted and you arrive on campus. So just something to note that those will be required of you. So you might wanna start collecting them um, from your school if you are offered admission. We do ask for a professional resume or CV. Um, typically students who are applying to our MBA program are going to submit something more along the lines of a resume with some work experience. It's not required, it's just kind of what the department is looking for. The CV is more for our STEM applicants, so any type of publications, internship, research that you've completed. Also, um, letters of recommendation. We do require these at the graduate level and we ask for a minimum of two for our master's applicants and three for our um, doctoral applicants, those PhD programs. They can be academic or professionally based. So it could be a professor or it can be your um, employer or supervisor. Um, these are submitted electronically. So when you submit your application, you enter in the individual's contact information and they will receive an email of how to submit that electronically. However, if you were given like a PDF or a printed out version of a letter, you can always email that to your um, admissions counselor and they will upload it to your portal for you. And then um, again, this foreign credential evaluation is optional. We do do those in-house for graduate applicants as well. But if you already have one, we do ask that you upload it um, and submit that for us because it will expedite the process. Now for the GMAT and the GRE, the GRE is not required for most of our programs. Um, it's only required for the Strategic Communication MA program, and the GMAT is only required for our MBA program. However, you can be considered for exemption from this requirement if you are a very bright student, have a very high percentage or grade average. Um, you would just email your admissions counselor, which is Kezi, and ask her that the department considers you for admission without this checklist requirement. Yeah. If you do not email her, it's going to stay as an outstanding requirement on your checklist and your application won't move forward. So that's definitely something that you wanna make note of. If you don't have this, you can be considered without it. You just need to ask. Next slide, please. All right, so the cost of graduate attendance. You'll see here that it notes out of state and in state. What's really cool at, our, um, at Rowan for our graduate students is that we do not charge out of state tuition or an international student fee, all of our graduate students pay the same cost. So if I were to go to school, I would pay the same cost as you to go to a graduate program. So the tuition and fees is 16,400 and that's for the year. The room and board and insurance and expenses and overall cost you see here is what's listed on our I-20. However, our students definitely do not pay this because graduate students are not required to live on campus or have a meal plan. So this is what you'll see is our average room and board um, for graduate students, but again, they live off campus. And insurance, you can show proof of your own and expenses is what you do on the weekend in your own time. Um, when we surveyed our graduate students, they do not pay more than 20,000 for the year. So 
So that's almost 4,000 in extra expenses out of pocket. So because we do offer that discounted tuition rate for all graduate students, we unfortunately don't offer merit-based scholarships for graduate applicants, but there are other ways that you can receive financial assistance through graduate assistantships or graduate research assistantships. And graduate research assistantships, ooh, mouthful, is students who apply for our MS programs that have a track one option, or PhD programs. So for example, if you apply to the MS in Mechanical Engineering Track 1 thesis program, you'll be considered for graduate research assistantship opportunities. And again, if you apply to like a Mechanical Engineering doctoral program, you are automatically considered as well. And these GRAs are when you would be conducting research with faculty members, they're typically funded by state grants. Um, so students are encouraged to connect with faculty members when they are applying because they are very competitive um, positions. Um, you may also wanna consider coming um, and applying through a non-thesis option. And then once you're here for a semester and you get to know um, some of the faculty members, they are able to pick you up for a research assistantship later on. So if you are unable to secure one um, at the time of admission, you also can know that there are ways that you can secure them later. Additionally, there are non-academic graduate assistantships, meaning not research-based. These are offered through different departments such as housing, student activities, um, and the level of funding varies for both of these. So some of our students are fully funded and some are partially funded where they only have to worry about housing and things like that. So they vary from level to level and um, these are communi communicated to you when you are receiving these positions. All right, so for any of you students who may not have a language test or have a language test score that's below the minimum required scores that we've already gone over, we do offer oh. conditional admission. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to be considered for conditional admission and you did not have a language test score, you would just, again, email your admissions counselor asking them to be considered for conditional admission because if not, again, that um, requirement is going to stay on your application checklist and your application won't go any further. But if you have a language test score that's below our minimum requirement, we're going to automatically consider you for conditional admission. And this means if you meet all of the other academic requirements, GPA, prerequisite courses, all of the other um, documents you submitted are sufficient, then we would consider you and offer you conditional admission. And this would give you two years to meet the language test requirement. And you can do that by either submitting a test score, so taking a language test or um, retaking a test, so to speak, and submitting a language test score that meets the minimum requirement. Or you can also enroll in our English language program here at Rowan. Um, and upon completing that successfully with at least a 3.0, you would be um, automatic um, full admission. All right, so if you are going to submit an application, dead, um, application, the deadlines are very important. So for our spring 22 enrollment that we are working on right now, the application submission deadline, which means submitting the application fully, is November 1. That's the last day we're going to accept new applications. And then um, from that date, a week later is the last day, November 5, that we're going to accept documents to be submitted. On November 6th, if we don't have all of your requirements, your application will be withdrawn and you'll be told that you should reapply to a future semester. And again, for fall um, 22 enrollment, the app submission deadline is May 13th and the document submission deadline to fulfill all of the requirements is May 31st. So student and campus life. Um, so Rowan's community is a vibrant one. We have a student-centered mindset. So we offer a wide range of opportunities for students to get involved. And there's truly something for everyone. Um, for our housing options, we have 12 plus housing options. We have many apartment communities um, around the Rowan campus that you can rent when you, if you choose to live off campus that are within walking distance. We also offer a homestay option where you could stay with a local family and get that cultural experience. 
Um, and then obviously university housing, we have various different resident halls and apartment communities that are available on our campus. Um, that gives you easy access to resources and other facilities. But again, everything is within walking distance no matter where you choose to live um, when you're doing your studies here at Rowan, everything will be accessible to you. As far as our activities and clubs, we have um, specific clubs to international students, which I'll touch on in the next slide. Um, but we also offer division three sports. So we do not offer sports scholarships, but we do have um, sports on our campus. We have intramural sports and club sports um, for students of all level, both male and female and co-recreational. We do have a cricket club um, here at Rowan as well. And if there's a club that um, we don't offer, students are able to create their own. So that's actually what happened with the cricket club. Rowan, um, before our international student population um, has reached the growth that it has today. Um, we did not have this club, but um, we found that it was a need and our students really wanted this. So they went ahead and started one on their own and found like a faculty to sponsor them and things like that. Um, so that is a possibility as well. If there's something that is of interest to you and that doesn't exist, um, you can create that as well. So international student services. So um, aside from your own admissions counselor, Kezi and I, you also are assigned um, international student advisors. So um, during your studies here, any questions that you may have, um, it could be about your status, it could be about CPT or OPT or finding a job or um, even getting a driver's license. You have student advisors here that are here to assist you um, from beginning to graduation. Um, we do have an international student club as well that um, all of our international students, no matter undergrad or grad, are involved in. Um, we celebrate International Education Week every November. So this is a week um, celebrated nationwide where at Rowan we have day or events every day of that week. Um, really highlight our international students at Rowan. And then each semester we offer an international new student orientation. So aside from the orientation that the university offers, our office does an international orientation where we really talk about things that are important to you, um, about maintaining your status, how to register, how to pay, um, very specific for um, international students. Um, and aside from that, we do offer tax services for students who get part-time jobs, how to file your taxes as an international student. We have writing workshops um, that are helping our graduate students write a thesis who may have never written one before. Um, and then we do have job fairs every semester where major companies come to Rowan's campus to try and recruit Rowan students specifically at all levels. So it could be internships or um, job placements for full-time jobs. And then we do trips to the surrounding cities as well. So if you're unable to get around, you don't have a car, um, we do do bus trips into Philly or New York, and you get to see the, the cool areas that Olga talked about earlier. All right, so career opportunities. Um, I touched a little bit about this, but so some of our programs do offer CPT where you can do an internship for credit um, during your studies. Um, and then our students are able to work up to 20 hours on campus. Um, when they're fully, fully enrolled, they have full-time enrollment, you can work up to 20 hours. After you graduate, you do have the option for OPT. A lot of our programs are STEM eligible. And if you have a question about if a specific program is eligible to be for that STEM extension, you can just ask us and we'll let you know. And then um, a lot of our undergraduate students go on to their postgraduate studies. They go on to a graduate degree, um, or you can apply for the H-1B work visa and go on to and work. So that's pretty much everything we have for you today. I do want to welcome you to become part of not just the momentum that Rowan has and the growth that we've been experiencing at Rowan, but the real family that we have here at Rowan. Um, our international students um, like to say that they feel like they're part of a family, and this is just a few words from some of them. Um, we feel like there is a sense of community here at Rowan for our students. Um, they don't feel alone. They feel like they're at home. Um, there is truly something for everyone here. Um, so there's definitely ways to get involved and learn about um, different cultures and things like that and try to get the most out of your experience studying abroad. 
Um, and it's affordable, right? So we have those awesome scholarships. We do have graduate assistantships that you can apply for, but our tuition itself is very affordable for our area. Um, and then our faculty members, they are, they most of them have terminal degrees. They're really invested in our students, but we do have that um, close working and relationship with our faculty because we don't have those lecture halls. So you really get that personalized learning experience from Rowan um, when you are not in a lecture hall and you can network with faculty, not just um, to help you learn more and get the most out of your education, but for career opportunities as well. And at this point, I'd love to open it up for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks. Thank Thanks. You I'm going to stop sharing, yes, so we can see the questions. Thank you, uh, thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Kisni, and uh, uh, thank you, basically, uh, Olga, for that wonderful presentation from all three of you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, let me take the first question. Basically, there are a few more that has come directly to me. Uh, do you have MD for medical graduates programs? Yes. Uh, well, actually, we do. Uh, we do have an MD program. However, unfortunately, the MD program is not currently available for international students. Our DO program is available, which is our School of um, uh, Osteopathic Medicine. Uh, but uh, many uh, medical schools in the US, some of them, particularly MD, um, they, they are not open for international students. However, like I said, we have two of them in one of our medical schools um, does accept international students. Uh, myself and Laura, we do not oversee that process. That is directly with the medical school. However, um, Laura is the admissions counselor for pre-med. If you are interested in you know, the undergrad pre-med um, program, biological science is a popular one that uh, our students tend to select for that. Perfect. Um, that's good. And uh, Sandri, if you have any more doubts, feel free to ask. Uh, there is also basically, uh, you know, uh, something before I ask question, I have to tell that Rohan University in the presentation, you have seen that it's the fifth largest public uh, going university, fifth largest, fastest going university. Now, it makes a lot of sense because in this pandemic, when things were not moving, when things were slowed down, and when in this time when they say that you know it's fifth fastest going university, that speaks a lot about the own university. Also, it is ranked in uh, top hundred basically uh, in public universities, ranked public universities eighty five, and uh, you know overall it is ranked in one seventy five. So all the ranking in this place, uh, fastest going university, all the programs that they have, uh, the cost. If you're looking for a graduate program, they charge the in-state uh, uh, and the out-state fees are same. They have assistantship for, uh, for graduate programs. For undergraduate, they have uh, scholarships, which can be from $1,000 to $19,000 per year, and uh, provided you maintain that GPA. So all those few wonderful things and uh, probably uh, things that you should look at when you, if you want to apply. Uh, it's a New Jersey, so uh, a good location, a uh, lot of Indian students, uh, so all those things that work for you. Uh, Atul basically wants to know uh, about its NCA uh, t uh, triple division. Uh, he wants to know in athletics, it is which division for NCA triple double A? Sorry. We are division three. Division three. Okay. Uh, Sayadri basically wants to know if someone is U.S. citizen, actually Sayadri is part of that, and U.S. citizen, and has completed undergraduate from Gaida University, New Jersey, in pre-med, can uh, she do MD medical in your college? So for, um, for U.S. citizen, um, and particularly uh, myself and Laura, we handle uh, international students, um, but we do have a whole admissions, um, you know, office that handles our domestic students. So a U.S. citizen will be considered a domestic student. Um, and I would advise you to contact our medical school directly because um, we do not handle the admissions process. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Thank you for answering that. Uh, also, I want to inform that there is no application fee. So, you know, by applying, 
you will know what is your chance. Okay, you will understand what is your chance. And once you know, basically, you have got admission and probably you got scholarship, you can make a decision later. You have nothing to lose, but everything to gain. So that's very one of the important thing that you have to uh, understand as well. Richard, uh, just to add to that, um, because we do not have a, an application fee, uh, we also do not evaluate any applications before, um, like some students send emails, hey, can you check if I'm admissible? We do not do that. Um, we evaluate once we have the application and all of the supporting documents. Sandy, let me answer your question. They have MD medical program, but the persons uh, right now are uh, managing international students. So if you contact the university directly, the medical programs, you will get answer for your questions. Okay, they do have uh, medical programs. Okay. I'm gonna uh, add here in the link our uh, MD and our DO um, institutions as well in the um, chat. Okay. Now, uh, there are some more questions basically. One is basically uh, the student has done diploma which is after 10th, three years of diploma. He has done diploma in mechanical engineering. So he wants to know, uh, should he apply for a freshman or a transfer student? So you mentioned that there are questionnaires which will help them to basically understand whether he is freshman or transfer. So he has done, uh, after 10th, he has done three years of diploma. So his question is, one question could be, is the three years of diploma equivalent to 12th? Oh, and second question could be, am I eligible for uh, being a transfer student? How do you answer that? So when we conduct the foreign credential evaluation, a lot of the times um, students with the three-year diploma are equivalent to one year of undergraduate study. So what I would advise is um, to apply as a transfer student. And when we are complete with that um, foreign credential evaluation, we will let you know if and for any reason you are qualified or not qualified as a transfer applicant. Um, but a lot of the time students do have equivalent to one year of undergrad study. Perfect. Uh, there is one more question basically about, you mentioned master's programs are for two years, uh, but I guess in the presentation, uh, it was also mentioned that student can take more credits. Uh, so is it possible to finish the program earlier, bachelor or master's? So for graduate students, yes, yeah, I, I would say for both, yes, it's possible to finish faster. Um, what we recommend, though, is to not come in for your first semester and go like um, try and go very fast right off the bat because it could be a little bit of a learning curve. So I would say start off with a normal schedule. And then if once goes well, you can add more courses later on and kind of speed up um, your studies. I totally agree with you, Laura. That's a very good answer because uh, student needs to understand that uh, first the process, the system, they are going to a new country. It is worth to go slow, understand, feel comfortable. And then if you want to take more, you can take more. Also, you are there, there as a student, probably you want to enjoy your student life. It's one of the most memorable moments that you would like to cherish all your life. So make that moment count. Richard, the same is for an undergrad student as well. Um, we advise the same thing, but uh, after the first semester, if they feel comfortable and confident. Uh, they can literally take summer classes, winter classes. Uh, to give an idea uh, for my doctor studies, um, the classes were for like about four years and I finished uh, beyond like close to three years. So I literally pile through really quickly because I love the classes. Um, so you can definitely do that, um, you know, um, but also think about job opportunities as well. You know, many of our students, they do work on campus up to 20 hours per week. Uh, so having that, um, that um, experience as well in student clubs uh, is also as well as important um, too. Perfect, thank you, thank you. Uh, very much basically uh, kissing me for this, that answer. That's, that's perfectly sad. Uh, there's one more question, which is little, uh, which is very different. Uh, the question is basically uh, that, uh, can I come for a short program uh, uh, to experience the uh, education system and like a summer course or a winter course, and then basically make a decision of joining one university? 
Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, we literally just um, worked on our short term application um, and it is available. Uh, it's a very simple application. You can come for a semester, um, you know, explore Rowan, see if it's a good fit for you. And then, you know, after that, you can apply for your master's or, you know, with the uh, doctoral and so on. But we do have that available. Uh, we also have partnerships with uh, many universities across the world as well for exchange students too. So Rowan does offer, you know, uh, many different options. So uh, Lauren, you want to add to that? Yeah, to add to that, um, for our short term students, I would add that you can take courses in any program and you don't have to choose like your program or your major. So this could be a good option for students who might not know if they want to study at Rowan. And maybe if you don't know at which program is a good fit for you, you can take a course in computer science and you can take a course in mechanical engineering and you can try and figure it out that way as well and see what is most of interest to you. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Kisini. Thanks, Logan. There's one more question related to this. Uh, I guess basically uh, the person is a professor and he is asking, can our education institute send students for one semester to uh, Rowan University uh, undergraduate programs and basically they can experience this? Yes, it's for both, for undergrad and graduate students. Uh, the short-term program is available for all levels. Um, now, um, like I said, that application, there is a short-term program is also, there is um, application for exchange students that have a partnership with Rowan, like their institution back home have a partnership. And we have a colleague, uh, her name is um, Zahia Obey, uh, and she's the one that handles that process. Okay. So entire batch of, let's say, 60 students can come to Rohan and take one semester and go back, is it? Yeah, and that would probably require more like a partnership and that would have to be discussed with our director. Um, so I can put his email here in a chat. Um, so, you know, um, that person interested in, in that type of particular program, he'll be able to, you know, better advise her in what particular situation would be best. Uh, if it's a partnership, or it was just, you know, a um, short term study. Perfect. Uh, you know, the next question is on job fairs. Uh, basically, in this pandemic, how much is job fairs affected and uh, is, is it the right time to study now? So I would say for job fairs, I think it's created more opportunities. So it's less restricted on location, meaning we don't just have job or I'm sorry, employers from our surrounding cities. We have employers now joining us virtually from all over. Um, so it definitely, I think, is opening up opportunities with um, things being more virtual like this. So I would say um, that for sure. Okay. Uh, perfect, because I guess this pandemic has created new opportunities uh, for everybody, uh, new work culture, uh, new systems, and um, you know what has gone done has to come up as well. So uh, it's the best time to study, best time to invest in your studies abroad. Uh, well said, Lauren. Um, the last question that is there is uh, for undergraduate student: Is accommodation uh, on campus compulsory, mandatory? Yes. Um, so for an undergrad freshman, uh, so you're in your first year and second year, it is required um, to live on campus. Uh, the housing office does uh, give some uh, waivers if you live with live if you live with your legal guardian. Um, they can provide waivers for you, uh, and then your third and fourth year you can live off campus. Um, so typically, it's just for our freshman students, our transfer students can live off campus, our graduate students can live off campus, which is more affordable. Okay. Thank you very much for answering all those questions, for being here, all three of you. It was wonderful. You know, you made this session so lively and so uh, informative, you know, uh, all, and entire, basically, the audience was there till basically the end that talks about your uh, presentation and the answers that you did. Thank you very much. Any final thoughts, all three of you, whatever you want to say before you, before we end this? 
I would just like to say thank you so much, Richard, for having us again. It's a pleasure joining um, yourself and your team year after year. Uh, I believe this is our third time doing something like this. So it's always a pleasure. Um, and, you know, your um, students always bring some great um, questions as well, like the, the short-term program. Uh, this is something that we just worked on. And it's great to see that there is some interest already um, for that type of program. So thank you again for having us. And uh, thank you for taking a little bit of the time to learn more from Rowan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anything, Olga? Thank Lauren. you, Richard. Yes, thanks so much. It was my first time with you. I just I just met you. It's a pleasure to me. I'm just going to leave an email here in the chat box for our new students. Uh, it's international at rowan.edu. So if any of your students uh, have any questions at all, they can email to that email, and we will be happy to to give them answers. Thank you, Olga. Thank you very much. Uh, Lauren, anything? Yes, thank you so much for having us. It's always a pleasure. Um, it's so happy to see you. It's been a while, so I'm, I'm happy to be part of this. And yes, we welcome your students. We hope that we get a lot of applications. <laughs> <laughs> this time we are looking for uh, sending a lot of applications because there are a few good students queries that have come up. And we we'll sincerely look forward that you know all these students join World University. Thank you again awesome. for being here. Wonderful to see you all and getting connected with again uh, all of three back here. Or in fact, uh, with Kesni and you is good seeing you. And Olga, welcome. Uh, you know this is our first time, but we look forward to have more interactions. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.